Good evening, everyone, and welcome, everyone. My name is Steve Martins, and I'm a proud Bristol alum, the first vice chair of our Alumni Association Steering Committee, and your master of ceremonies for tonight's Bristol Awards. I'm thrilled to be here at this event, which is being held for the first time since 2019. So some of you may recall that we've had to cancel our last scheduled Bristol Awards. It was scheduled for March 12, 2020, actually my birthday. And you may recall it wasn't a great time to have large get-togethers, but it is a new day. It's a happy day, and we're thrilled to be back here together. So tonight is dedicated to celebrating the Bristol Community College alumni and those who work so hard to support the college and our community in many ways. So given our fantastic awardees tonight, this ceremony was worth the wait. And I'm so proud to be helping to honor these amazing Bristol alumni tonight. More than 35,000 alumni have completed certificates or associate's degrees since Bristol was established in 1965. Thousands have transferred on their way to bachelor's degree and beyond. And thousands have gone directly into the workforce and careers made possible by their degree from Bristol. So when Bristol celebrated its 50th anniversary, we inaugurated this awards event to recognize that Bristol graduates are truly a gift to our community. So later this evening, you will learn more about our honorees. They represent what is possible when students invest in their future here at Bristol, and when Bristol and surrounding organizations invest in our students. So thank you to tonight's supporters at the partner level, the law offices of Maiza M. Silva, Bay Coast Bank, Webster Bank, Phil and Olivia Oliveira, Waring Sullivan Funeral Home, and Friends of Mayor Coogan. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So I invite everyone to enjoy your salads during this next part of the program. In the meantime, please welcome the fourth president of Bristol Community College, my friend and someone who I look up to every single day, Dr. Laura L. Douglas. Well, thank you so much, Steve, and welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming tonight to celebrate Bristol Community College alumni and the friends that we have who are making our community stronger and building our future, and the future certainly looks bright. You must be so proud of your friends and family members that we're honoring tonight. I know that I am. We are fortunate to have each other and a strong sense of commitment to the people we live and work among. And isn't it great to be here in person again? I'd like to say a few words about one of our favorite alumni and a true champion of Bristol, and that's Steve, who graciously agreed to serve as our Master of Ceremonies this evening. The son of Portuguese immigrants, Steve was the first in his family to earn a high school diploma. While attending Bristol Community College, he was elected the student senate to the Student Senate and served as our Vice President. Steve told me that while serving in the Senate, he took government 51 and 52, and that was when he knew that he wanted to be in public service and the story gets better. Steve went on to earn a bachelor's degree from UMass Dartmouth, and in his senior year of college, he launched his first campaign for a seat on the New Bedford City Council. On November 7, 2007, he was elected as the youngest city councilor in New Bedford's history. How about that?
He served as city council president in 2012 and completed a decade on the council before deciding in the fall of 2017 that he would not run again for re-election. Steve has held positions with the Executive Office of Labor and Workforce Development, Bristol County Retirement System, and is now serving as Chief Revenue Office at the Massachusetts State Lottery Commission. But don't ask him for any special lottery tickets. It hasn't worked for me so far. He has been an active alumnus of Bristol, currently serving as first vice president of our alumni association, uh, our, our steering, alumni associating steering committee, and leading and supporting our alumni engagement efforts, including tonight's event. Thank you, Steve for your service to our community and to Bristol Community College. We are grateful for all that you do. So thank you so much, Steve. In its nearly 60 year history, Bristol has grown from a one building campus, offering a small number of traditional associate degrees to an institution with four campus locations in Attleboro, Taunton, Fall River, and New Bedford. And we also have an online campus. And currently under construction is the National Offshore Wind Institute that we affectionately call the NAWI, which is on the waterfront in New Bedford. And that will provide an array of career and academic opportunities throughout southeastern Massachusetts. Uh, this growth is certainly a tribute to our community and the many supporters of education among us. The degrees that we offer here open doors to good paying jobs that support our graduates and their families and provide a foundation for their hopes and dreams for the future. Each person honored tonight is a symbol of what is possible with a college education. They represent all Bristol alumni and the success of the college. We have a very special group of honorees tonight who represent what is possible when the community stands behind our students and offers its support. It gives me pause to reflect on the challenges our community has faced in the three years since these extraordinary alumni were supposed to be honored. So tonight's award awardees exemplify the leadership, determination, generosity, courage, and dedication to the community that has brought us through the pandemic. Each of you, Paul, Shalise, Cliff, Miza, Sher Chelsea and our volunteers from the mobile food market are committed to a better life for your families and for your community. It's a pleasure to showcase your accomplishments tonight. Thank you to the Bristol Community College, board of, uh, College Foundation Board of Directors, the Bristol Alumni Association, and its awards committee for collaborating to make this event a success. We work together with pride and we lean on you for advice and guidance. Thank you for your dedication. In recognition of your efforts on behalf of your alma mater, I invite the Bristol Awards Committees to stand as we applaud your efforts that have culminated in tonight's wonderful celebration. Please stand. There we go. There we go. Thank you so much. I'd also like to recognize stead steadfast advocates for the college who are here tonight. The members of the Bristol Community College Board of Trustees, Joan Medeiros, our chair. Also with us tonight are members of the Bristol Community College Foundation Board of Directors, John McMahon, I know I saw you. There we go. And Pete Silva. There we go. Frank Sousa the third. 
and Richard Wolfson. There's Dick in the back. I'd also like to recognize members of Bristol's Alumni Association Steering Committee, Steve Martins, Joanne Brialt, Cindy Flanagan, Carol Michael, Phil Oliveira, and Edward and Natalie Sousa. I'd also like to recognize our wonderful elected officials, Mayor Paul Coogan, and City Councilor Laura Washington. We hope that meeting our award recipients, their families and friends, will help our current students dream big as they contemplate their own futures. Bristol students, please stand to be recognized. We have many in the back. They can wave. There we go. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Tonight's dinner was prepared and served by our Bristol Community College culinary arts students under the director of Associate Professor of Culinary Arts, Chef Esteban Martinez. Chef, there he is. They do a wonderful job, and if you haven't tried his empanadas, you need to try his empanadas. <laughs> so thank you so much for a wonderful meal. It's no wonder we have such amazing food at Bristol Community College. Please enjoy your dinner and the conversations at your tables. Uh, we will begin the awards presentation after buffet table service. So now's your time just to relax, enjoy, and, en and uh, have some fantastic food from our culinary students. Thank you so much. So I hope everyone enjoyed that delicious, delicious dinner. If we can give everyone here a round of applause, especially the students here who've been serving us and the wonderful food. It's just been simply, simply amazing. Top-notch service, so we thank the students. So we're now pleased to present our awards. The first award tonight is the Mari Kusinitz Volunteer of the Year Award. Mari was an amazing supporter of the people of Fall River and of Bristol Community College. His legacy of gen generosity lives on this award. It will be presented by his granddaughter, Tara Ganyan. So please welcome Tara. The recipient of the 2023 Mari Kusinitz Volunteer of the Year Award is the Bristol Mobile Food Market Volunteer Group. Can the Mobile Food Market Volunteers and representatives who are here tonight come on stage? The Bristol Mobile Food Market began in August of 2013, powered primarily by the volunteers. Tonight, we are recognizing 12 people who appear each month, roll up their sleeves and ensure the successful distribution of healthy food options to our community. Alden Kirby, Peggy, Carrie Kirby, Robert Rays, Karen Rays, Arlene Harnett, Madalena Medeiros, Marsha Bryan, Joan McCarthy, Sheila Zangwill, Irene Costa, April Gavea, and Maria Gavea play all a crucial roles in the extensive food distribution project. Volunteers greet the delivery truck, unpack and repack the foods, handle student box holds, and prepare for the hours long pickup process. The Bristol Mobile Food Market, through its partnership with the Greater Boston Food Bank, serves 500 people each month. Approximately half the participants are students, and another half are community members. 
Due to the success of this program, the needs of our community, distribution has been expanded to the New Bedford, Taunton, and the Attleboro campuses. And through the pandemic, food insecurity became an even more urgent challenge in our community. These and other volunteers stepped up to make distribution of food safe and contactless. These volunteers were first selected for this award before the pandemic. They have come to symbolize the ways that our community comes together to support each other, even in the most challenging of times. So tonight, we have two representatives from the group, Arlene Harnett and Sheila Zangwill, here to receive the award on behalf of the group. So Tara would like to present the award to the volunteer, to the, I'm sorry, to present the award to the volunteer, Arlene Harnett, who is also a Bristol alumna. So thank you and congratulations to the Bristol Mobile Food Market Volunteer Group. And now the next award is the Black or African American Alumna of the Year Award. This award has been given by the college for more than 20 years to an alumna or alumnus who has demonstrated professional success and service to the community. The recipient of the 2023 Black or African American Alumna of the Year Award is Chelsea Stevenson. Chelsea was una unable to be here tonight, but her husband, Frank, surprised her with a well-deserved vacation. So her mother, Dawn Cavanaugh, and her son, Kyron Stevenson, are here to accept the award on her behalf. So if you could please make it yourselves to the stage. So Chelsea completed an Associates of Science degree at Bristol in 2015, and her success to the faculty and staff who made her feel like she mattered. For more than 13 years, Chelsea worked at Health First Family Care Center, where she was a community liaison for the Fall River Woman and Infant and Children Nutrition Program. Chelsea took advantage of the mass transfer program enrolling at Bridgewater State University, where she graduated with a bachelor's degree in social work. She is currently project and outreach specialist with Tufts Health Plan, continuing the work of connecting her community with the tools and resources to be healthy and thrive. She also serves on the advisory board of United Neighbors of Fall River. Chelsea is often seen at Bristol attending family nights with her husband, Frank, who is also a fellow Bristol alum, tabling at outreach events, and supporting the Bristol Mobile Food Market. She is an alumna who truly stays connected and gives back. We are thrilled to honor Chelsea here tonight. Congratulations. So now we're also pleased to present 
the Alumni Service Award to three outstanding Bristol alumni. These distinguished alumni have careers, families, and service records of which they and we can be very proud of. These recipients are Shalise Jackson, Clifford Clement, and Maiza Silva. So if you can please make your way to the stage. I also have Catherine, it says, Catherine, please step forward. Is that it? Okay, got it. False alarm. <laughs> so Cliff Clemont unfortunately could not be here tonight. He's on vacation with Mary, his wife of nearly 50 years. Their daughter, Catherine Barnes, is here to accept the award on his behalf. After graduating from BMC Durfee High School in 1967, Cliff joined the United States Army. He served two years in Vietnam and then used the GI Bill to attend Bristol Community College where he says an education came at an important time in his life. He went on to earn a Bachelor of Science in Sociology from Southern Eastern Massachusetts University, which is now UMass Dartmouth. He later earned a certificate in occupational therapy. Cliff held several jobs, including social worker and occupational therapist here in Fall River before joining the fire department in 1980. A tragic incident brought both elements of Cliff's career together. Fellow firefighter Paul Bernard came disoriented in a smoke-filled building fire and then died in the line of duty. Cliff did not want to see that happen again, so he invented the Bernard Easy Exit. He received a utility patent for this device, which is essentially a Braille exit sign placed on the fire hose so firefighters can find their way out of the building. How genius. And then when Cliff retired from the Fall River Fire Department in July of 2008, he had a calling to walk the Camino de Santiago, a 500-mile pilgrimage across northern Spain. He has made several more pilgrimages since then, most recently walking the Portuguese Camino as a fundraiser for the Helene Schupac scholarship here at Bristol. It's amazing. Congratulations, Cliff and Catherine. Thank you for being here tonight. <laughs> Shalice, if you can step forward. Shalice Jackson worked hard to gain entry into the Bristol Competitive Intens Intensive Nursing Program. As a student, she helped from parenting club on campus and served in the nursing class of 2018 secretary. She earned her RN in 2018 and graduated with a bachelor's degree in nursing from UMass Dartmouth in 2022. She is currently enrolled at UMass in the Doctor of Nursing Practice Program. Shalise currently serves as a hospice nurse beacon hospice in Fall River. She is charged with providing her patients with the most ethical and empathetic care. She says she loves the work because it gives her a chance to give back to the community of people who need the most care, love and compassion. When not at work, you might see Shalice on the sidelines of a Pop Warner football game or cheering on her daughter's basketball team at Atlantis Charter School. Shalice always managed to find the way to stay time engaged in her community and to be actively involved in her five children's education and 
extracurricular activities. And being a mom brings her great joy. And she takes pride in her children's accomplishments and their compassionate and giving nature. Shalise is proud of her children and is currently a student at Bristol. Congratulations, Shalise. And Maiza, if you could please step forward. <laughs> Maiza came to Bristol in 2004, the year she immigrated to the United States and began her studies with an F1 student visa. Maiza received her associate's degree in business administration from Bristol Community College in 2006. She has worked in a variety of jobs while maintaining grades that would allow her to transfer and then attend law school. Maiza received her Bachelor of Science degree from Roger, Roger Williams University and her Juris Doctorate from the Massachusetts School of Law. Maiza has worked extensively and successfully in the matters of immigration rights and disability claims with clients from different language backgrounds. Maiza is fluent in English, Cape Verdean Creole, Portuguese, and Spanish. It's amazing. Maiza continuously gives back to her community, participating in the Lawyer of the Day program at the Probate and Family Court at Bristol County. She advocates for victims of domestic violence and is actively involved in the Cape Verdean community. She received the first Justices Award for Pro Bono Publico Excellence in 2016 is phenomenal. Congratulations, Maiza. Congratulations to everyone. Even though this woman needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce her, I would like to introduce Joan Medeiros, the chair of the Bristol Community College Board of Trustees, to present the Paragon Award. Joan is the first woman appointed by the governor to serve as the chair of the Bristol Community College Board of Trustees. She is vice president of the commercial lending at here, Bristol County Savings Bank. Joan is an accomplished professional and a dedicated member of the community who serves on numerous boards. Joan was the chair of Mayor Coogan's transition team. She nominated Mayor Paul Coogan for the Paragon Award. So please welcome me, Joan Medeiros. So tonight has been a long time in coming since this all started in 2020. So I would like to present the 2023 Paragon Award to Mayor Paul Coogan. Mayor Coogan, would you please join me on the stage? <laughs> Paul, congratulations on being named the 2023 Paragon Award winner. We have been waiting a long time to honor you with this award and it was worth the wait. The Paragon Award is the most distinguished award from a Bristol, for a Bristol Community College alumnus. You are a community leader who has demonstrated a loyal interest in the college over the years. It is my pleasure to honor you here tonight. I remember learning that you graduated from Bristol during a radio interview shortly after you became mayor. It was evident that your experience made an impact throughout your life. In serving as an educator at BMC Durfee High School, you were a role model for students who aspired to college and to careers that would build promising futures for themselves and their families. 
you have left a lasting impact on thousands of students throughout the area. In choosing public service, you have found yet another way to give back to your community. Over the years, your commitments have included serving as a SMILES mentor, your previously elected position on the Far River School Committee, and then on the fun side, you've been sharing your love of running and physical fitness by organizing road races over the years. You are a familiar face at our college events, and I know that you recognize the life-changing experience that our students have while attending our college. It makes us proud to hear you tell people that Bristol Community College is where your journey began. We are grateful to you for your support of the college and your ongoing commitment to our community. Bristol is honored to acknowledge your accomplishment tonight. Congratulations, Mayor Coogan. thought someone stole my speech. <laughs> um, I do want to say, uh, obviously, thank you to the entire committee, especially my good friend Joan Medeiros, and uh, for everybody for thinking of me for this award. It's When I went to Bristol Community College, I can assure you they weren't thinking of giving me any Paragon Award, because <laughs> that was not in the cards. <laughs> But as we journey through life, things change. Um, I also want to thank a few people before we go. Um, the people that work with me now in Government Center, my friends that have supported me through these campaigns. Um, you know what I think of you. You're all, you're all family and friends to me, and, um, and of course, the Bristol Community College. Now, I do have a little bit um, prepared. If I start to talk too long, raise your hands. Uh, that's what my father used to do right before he swatted me in the head, so I'll stop talking as soon as you tell me it's time. <laughs> <clears throat> I am, of course, honored to be here tonight. Anyone that knows me knows that it is rare that I'm still awake this late at night. I go to bed early. So it is indeed a very special night. And first, I'd like to thank Bristol Community Foundation for this unique award. And thanks to my friends, my families for all their support. It, this means a lot to me. And of course, my best friend, my wife, Judy, who is in reality my number one supporter. I received a tremendous education at Bristol Community College, and I am forever grateful. But tonight, I would like to start my seven-minute speech by taking a little bit, in, talking a little bit about my background and what it was like for me growing up in Fall River. I wasn't born in Fall River, but I definitely grew up here. I was actually born in Washington, D.C., and after that, we lived all over the place. There were 11 children in the Coogan clan, and I was the second oldest. My dad, God rest his soul, was an alcoholic. He had trouble holding jobs. It seemed like we were nomads sometimes, constantly moving from place to place to get him a fresh start while the disease consumed him. Finally, in my early teens, we came back to his hometown, Fall River. The move was our last, and it brought stability into our lives. I started grade nine at Morton, and then to Durfee, where I graduated in 71. Anyone who has a family member who suffers from addiction, whether it's drugs or alcohols, knows how difficult, disruptive, and painful life can be to everyone in the family. My dad fought his demons his entire life, trying to feed, clothe, and provide for a wife and 11 children that he loved. Those of us around him were changed by this experience. At times, of course, we were really hurt, but in the end, we both were toughened by it and sensitized to human frailty. The lessons were difficult, but in the end, they make you a better person, and they make you grow up. In my case, my youth was very rocky. It helped to prepare me for the career I loved, working with kids in Fall River who sometimes had troubles that often mirrored my own. I know many of them felt lost. Their problems led them to despair, drugs, misconduct, depression, and sometimes worse. Many times my job was simply to gain their trust and listen to them. 
This was not an easy task, but I did try to connect with those kids. Only then could I gain their confidence, offer advice, services, or convince them of their worth and potential and put them on a better track to a better direction. Of course, it did not always work. It was frustrating and hard, but I still loved it. The rewards of that job at Durfee were almost spiritual in nature to me. I went home at night feeling good because I had finally gotten through to some kid and I had helped them to find their way to a better place or simply get through another day. As I look back, I mourn the ones I was not able to reach, the ones we lost, and I still go to way too many wakes, but I know that in many cases I was able to connect with those kids, change their attitudes, their self-image, and of course, their lives. Now I bring that same work ethic, devotion, and energy to the task of being mayor in Fall River. I think of no higher calling, nor can I conceive of any job for which I am more qualified both by my temperament and my experience. I'm a fixer, a motivator, and a leader, and I'm good at all three, and this is where Bristol Community College joins the story. After Durfee, all I wanted to do was get a job that would pay me $300 a week for the rest of my life. Just $300. When I stood on that corner, I said, if I can only make $300 a week, I'll be set for life. Doesn't work that way. So after a couple of factory jobs in Trina and a luggage factory at Globe Four Corners, I decided it was not for me. I decided to join the Army, but I backed out of that at the last minute. I just couldn't do it. So I figured I'd better take some classes at Bristol Community College and get back into life. I enrolled in January, and for the same amount that I wanted to make for the rest of my life, $300, I signed up for four classes. It was the start of my change. It was Grow Up Time 101 for Paul Coogan, and a time to focus realistically and think about my future. I received a great education here. I got my associate's degree at Bristol, and, and the reason I went there is because for me, it checked all the boxes. It was in Fall River, it was low cost, and I always worked to pay my own tuition. It was a safe place to grow up. BCC taught me how to write, speak, and think. How to engage in adult conversations with people simply trying to help me. It was great, and I was truly becoming a lifelong learner. Bristol Community College put this lost Fall River kid on a path to success and over time, it taught me how to improve in school, and it helped me develop the skills necessary to be successful in life. After graduating from Bristol, I attended SMU, which is now UMass Dartmouth. I received a teaching certificate and a bachelor's degree. I followed that up later by using a combination of graduate courses from Massachusetts colleges and credits from California College to obtain a master's degree in administration. All these schools prepared me for my job as a vice principal at Durfee High School. The degrees, the experiences at Durfee, and everything else I've done in my life prepared me for my next adventure, which is now being mayor in the city of Fall River. I was elected mayor. It was a shock. I often look back at the times I spent throughout my education, whether taking classes or working, and I look at all the local, local schools that have played a role in my life. I looked at schools like Durfee, at UMass, where I was a student for multiple years, and at Durfee, I ended up working for 25 more. I spent two years at SMU, where I learned a ton and had a lot of fun. But it was the timing, strictly the timing, of my two years at Bristol Community College that had the biggest impact in my life. At, at a very confused time in my life, BCC gave me just what I needed, hope and a future. It truly gave me all the help I needed to move forward. The timing was perfect for me. In essence, the school saved me. Thank you, Bristol Community College. Thank you for this award, and I'm glad you listened tonight. I appreciate your attention. Thank you all very, very much.
Thank you, Mayor Kuhn, and sharing that story with, with all of us. So tonight we've seen the impact that Bristol Community College education can have in our community. Bristol provides, as you learned, a low cost, high quality education, and it serves the community in countless ways. Bristol sets students on their own personal path to success and fulfillment. Bristol is a great asset here in our neighborhoods across Bristol County and beyond. So thank you to all of you who support our efforts and mission. Please join me for one last time in congratulating all our awardees tonight. So thank you all for coming, and please have a safe ride home. Have a great night, and thank you.